You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sunday now, I'm the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Jorgen's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. I glanced at it one last time before we leave the place and go back to the bus. Strap your seatbelts, please. We're leaving in a moment. The bus doors closed with a hiss, followed by the engine's low rumble, like a beast waking to life. Everyone's in, and without any delays, the vehicle starts. So we're out of town, back in the woods. I'm so sleepy. I forced myself to keep my eyes open, though, at least until we're back in the guest house. Jorgen is looking outside, leaning on the window pane. What does he see there, beyond those pines and firs and spruces and the blue sky behind them? What do they mean to him? A different question passes through my thoughts just for a moment. What does he mean to me? But we start moving, the bus turning onto the road onwards to the guest house. My mind wanders in a different direction. It's been a nice day in town, but I look forward to the evening even more. I wonder what sort of film we'll be watching. Hopefully not something too old and boring. When we were going on trips in primary school, the bus driver would often play some French comedy or something else that, would, that never really interested me. The hushed, lazy atmosphere here is a welcome change. My thoughts join with the quiet engine into a drone, G gentle and drone, gentle murmur of the background, lulling me into a half a hazy, half-sleep state as the bus carries us forward, away from the setting sun. E. Nom 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 nom. You did what? I bumped his paw. While he was holding his phone. Yeah, it kind of fell into the sea. Lake. 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 Did it break? It stopped working. I think it wasn't waterproof. What should I do? Apologize to him, of course. Ask if there's anything you can do. Other than getting him a new phone, that is. No? That'd be the best option, I think. It's not really an option for me. I apologized already, but it doesn't make me feel less, any less guilty. I'll go ask. Maybe I can help him somehow. Good idea. Accidents happen. Blake walks away, his steps slow and solemn as if he was heading for his own demise. Oh, girl. Jorgen waits with a heavy sigh until Lake disappears behind the corner. Why does he always have to get into trouble? He's everywhere all the time. I guess that comes with it. Well, what's done is done. Maybe he'll be more careful next time. For the next few months, while well, he remembers it, that is. What are we doing, though? A lot of time left before the film should start. I don't know yet, but I'd like to head up to my room first and drop off my stuff. That sounds good. I don't have anything with me. Can I go with you? Sure, let's go. <sighs> My room, again. Familiar and safe. Everything is just everything is just where we where I left it. I glance at the bed, sprawling and inviting. A great tide has caused me like a wave. I didn't sleep much, but I can feel the sweet embrace of Morpheus waiting for me, warm and inviting. But I'm not alone here. I have to stifle the urge. My backpack and camera bag land land on the ground. My jacket follows. I feel too lazy to put it inside the wardrobe. Do you want something to drink? I'm fine, thank you. You don't mind me staying here, do you? No? Why? I thought we could go back to doing what we did last night. You mean cuddling? Correct. It was nice. We could. I like that a lot, too. Taking off our shoes, we get onto the bed together. We get onto the bed, eager. A peculiar feeling rises up in me. Something like lifting up into the air, weightless. Jorgen leans out against my side, head resting on my shoulder. It's like he looks like once he opens up, he doesn't mind being close at all. Maybe he's touched Star, but then who isn't? I'm just not brazen enough to cling to him like that. I feel as if it was imposing him myself on him. But this way, I don't mind it. And quite the contrary. I wonder how Lake is doing. Lake? Why him now? He was serious about the phone. I'm a bit concerned that he will keep thinking about this, feeling guilty after Rune forgets about it. Okay, now, water time. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Or maybe the phone was very, very important to Rune. I don't know. By the way, I feel sorry for Lake, because I know how badly he's taking it. But enough about him. Jurgen's paw finds mine and he pulls me down to the bed, stangling his back into me. My head rests on the pillow, snout fitting into the, into the nape of Jurgen's neck. 
Pulling him into me, I can feel how light his body is, but also how firm and sturdy he is despite that. I paw traces along his ribs, filling them through the fabric of his black shirt and his short fur underneath. I'm skinny, I know. I wish I was that- I wish I was this skinny. You look good right now. Some belly looks cute on you. Do I have a belly? Hey, I meant it. You look really good. You too. I snuggle the bat into myself so that he can't see my face, surely betraying my fluster. Suddenly I remember something from the town. Something I wanted to ask about earlier, but I was too busy thinking about the museum. By the way, Klaus? Really? I have a hard time imagining him in a relationship. How did you end up together? Jorgen tenses up in my embrace as he hears Klaus's name. Struggling like a bowstring just at a mention of him, I start questioning if asking was a good idea. Long story, one I'd rather forget. But if you want to know, I might have been I might have been Bjorgven while I was covering a festival. My band was there too. We played a concert, and when the rest of the band went for a smoke, I went the other way and saw him sitting at the side of the building. Covering a festival? Yeah, as a journalist. I was tasked with taking photos and doing a small write-up. Several interviews, too. So I asked what he was doing, and he said he was listening to the concert, but we sounded better through the wall. It was in August, so it was still bright out despite the late hour. Clad in all black, sunlight on his face, filtered through the, through the leaves, he looked really handsome and mysterious. I asked him how he liked the concert, and he said that it was alright for the most part. I appreciated the honesty. We talked for a bit, and I got, a, I got his disharmony to keep in touch. For the internet, he seemed interesting, and I thought he was exaggerating about his interests. I talked him into applying to our, to our union moving to Anslow. Things quickly started to unravel, though. I mentioned the birthday party, right? Yeah. That was one drop too many, and my frustrations overfilled. I get it, yeah. So, you traveled with a band and did journalism? That's so cool! A few times. It wasn't a paid job, though. I was writing for a local zine, DIY style. And never told me you were into photography? I'm not that much, really. It was part of the job. I got some shots from concerts that I'm proud of. I keep all issues of the zine in my room at the dorm. I'll have to see you once we come back. I'm just as much as I'd like to see Jorgen on stage and read the articles he wrote. He's done so much already. I wish I could be a photographer at a festival. Would his friends like me? Uh, a thought passes through my head, chilling. It took me sleeping in one room with Jorgen to make him warm up to me even a bit. What if his friends are even more critical? Your band, they're the people you hang out with usually. Yeah, usually. I'm lucky in that regard, as we get to play often too. Come to think of it, it's curious that the uni he's friends with Lake. They're nothing alike. Though, maybe that's exactly what keeps them together. How did you get together? The band was already active for some time when I found them. They're the beginning of my adventure with music, too. Back a few years ago, I think I was 17 at the time. I went to their concert at... Jesus Christ. Kultur Genop Livingschus. Kultur Genop Livingschus. They were playing an, imp an improvised gig, and it was my favorite venue. So I thought it'd be cool to go. Wait, they let you in when you were 17? Yeah, it's an anarchist venue. They don't check people at the entrance. They would check at the bar if you wanted any alcohol, but barely anyone drinks there anyway. Certainly not me. Excuse me. I went mostly to punk concerts before. I'll never forget how powerful of an experience it was for me, standing there in the crowd, barely able to see anything but the strobe lights bouncing off the ceiling, and listen to the absolute wall of noise crashing at me from the stage. So you know, water time. I love extreme music. I really do. It's an indescribable feeling. The assault on the senses, so powerful it pulls you out of your body. It's a meditative experience. Everything shuts down. The walls you build around you crumble, and all that's left is you and the music. After the concert, I went up to their instruments and lied to them that I'm their technician, and I sneaked backstage. I think they appreciated that because they were happy to chat with me. They told me they were looking for a singer, and I thought I could try. Did you sing before? No, it was a spontaneous thing. And many more things happen in your life when you say yes to every opportunity, both good and bad. He turns to look at me more directly, resting his paw on my chest, fingers sinking into my fur above the collar of my shirt. Who do you usually hang out with? Me? I don't really have a group yet. I know a few people from my year, and Lake from the dorm, and Miko. I've known him for some time, but we haven't talked much since we started uni. Before that. And before that, for that matter. I see. Bat snuggles himself into me tighter, snap resting below mine. I could have played some music, but it's too late now. I don't want to stand up or even take a phone out, take a phone out of my pocket. My arms feel heavy. I'd play something happy. I feel, I feel happy. Even though it's dark outside, I bask in a warm glow emanating from the organ. 
You're cute. My paw holding his. The warmth, the softness of it, the smooth palm, the short fur on the reverse side, the claws scraping against my paw light my paw lightly. I should buy him a flower, something that would match his handsomeness. White. That's the color I associate with him. A white rose, that's what would be fitting. I'd have to find it, or find a forest. There should be one around here, probably. Hey, wait for me here. I'll be back soon. I'll go with you. That's fine, too, I guess. Maybe he'll know what flower Jorgen, uh, flowers Jorgen likes. The streets are empty, but behind the window pane, shadows move across rooms. I peek into one curiously, but I see an empty living room. Child's toys scattered across the floor. In the distance, a train whistles, the harsh sound breaking through the lull of gentle waves looking at the shore, as if the sea was trying to swallow the island little by little. I wish I had my camera with me. Why didn't I take it? Especially now, with no one else around, the charm of this town shines from every street lamp and every rooftop up, every rooftop uplifting. Cold bites at my paw suddenly. Where are we going? I'm looking for a forest. Oh, I know one. It's a few streets away. Lake runs away and disappears behind a corner, leaving a trail of paw prints behind him in the fresh snow. I look around and a chill runs down my spine. I'm alone here. My paws carry me, cutting across the snow through meandering alleys to catch up the lion. And there he is, standing before a store, tail swaying behind him playfully. He has an innocent look on his face, so pure it feels almost like a mask. I try not to look into his eyes. It's here! He opens the door and holds them for me. The sweet smell of flowers clings to me when I enter, crawling inside my nostrils and up in my brain. Hello? Anyone here? You pick any flowers you want, they're for everyone. Oh, what do you think Jorgen would like? Why do you want to give Jorgen flowers? I mean, that's what you do, right? When you want to show someone your feelings? I'm so strung up, my arms feel stiff, like two branches. I don't know what to tell, I don't know what to tell Lake. Oh, I understand. Pick whatever you like. Pick whatever you like. Does it matter much? It's a gesture that matters, not the flower itself. Think of it as a... No, it's not an exchange. I don't want anything in return. You should get carnations. He likes them. Do you have feelings for him, too? Me? No, don't worry. Uh, but do you think he'll accept them? I hope so. You hope so, but you can never know. There's always a risk, and you can lose so much. You can lose him. No. I pick a single flower. It seems more fitting than a bouquet. Somehow. So, you know, it is water time. Sorry about that, I had to adjust my mic. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. I pick a single flower. It seems more fitting than a bouquet somehow. Maybe because Jorgen himself reminds me reminds me of a flower, ready to bloom, with his passions and temperament reaching out to the light. But now I have to find Jorgen. Where is he? With his friends? Maybe at a maybe at a band practice. Wait, I know, he was waiting for me. Maybe for, maybe for me on the roof. Waiting for me on the roof. He wanted to watch the sunrise together. The corridor is packed with students, so I have to push them aside to walk, wriggling my way through the dense crowd. Where are, they all, where are they all going? I keep the flower close to my chest, shielding it from their flailing paws and greedy eyes. Finally, I push to the, I push to the, locker, room, the locker room door. The locker room's corridor. It's quieter here and cool and cold, and the windows are all open and arctic wind blowing freely. I reach the door to the closet and open them wide. Only it's not the closet that's behind them. Stairs. The damp swell, the damp smell wafting from the underground. Earth. Soil. Heat. A weird kind of heat, sticky and humid. Like another person's heat. Air heavy with perspiration. Enter. Step, and then another. They echo in the underground, stubbornly loud. The staircase is long, leading several floors deep into the Earth's innards. Your paw slides along the steel rail, not quite holding it, but helping to lead you in the near darkness. Last step, and your naked paws rest on the marble floor, slightly warm to the touch. As with the press of a switch, brightness fills the room, soft light coming in from windows on one side of the marble hallway are ahead of you. A marvelous corridor opens before you, tall and long, lined with luxurious materials processed with skilled hands of an artisan. Pillars stand along the way, the way like guards, bulky and spartan. Instead of being intimidating, they make you feel safe. The air doesn't feel, feel oppressive anymore, warm and caressing your face. Opposite of window, the windows, there is a door between each of the pillars, some closed, some open, but your paws carry you forward and forward still until the end of the hallway, where thick doors stand, covered with dust and forgotten. Weird. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.